Zoroastrians worship one uncreated eternal god known as Ahura Mazda. Uncreated eternal, very much like Allah and the Quran. Which means wise lord. Zoroaster describes Ahura Mazda as the lord of order, something completely good, loving, <laughs> infinitely wise, and the creator of the world and all good things. Ahura Mazda is supported by six holy immortals known as... Yeah, so these are like his, like, viziers or, like, sidekicks. Sidekicks! But I think, again, I could be wrong about this, these, like, divine beings, like, other religions had this as well, right? So it's like the line between where does... You know, some religions have, like, a main god, like a very powerful god, and then some other gods who are not the main god, right? Like a pantheon, right? But then when it comes to Zoroastrianism, you have only one god, and these other people are not like gods. They're kind of like just there to help out, right? So their role is like not – they're not gods, right? But they are divine beings. But then all of a sudden when you get to Abrahamic religions, they get downgraded a little bit more to just angels, right? So – so it's, it's it, it, but the theme is the same. You have one central authority and some other people around to help around with things, but their status is other like sometimes like less powerful gods or just divine beings or angels. Let me see what actually I don't know what their status is in Zoroastrianism. Let's see what this is. Supported by six holy immortals known as the Amesha Spentas. These six holy immortals are normally compared to archangels in ah. Christianity if that helps you kind of figure out what their position is. Hmm. Sometimes there is a seven. I think angels were copied from this. I don't understand. Like, maybe not. Maybe a scholar. Like, I think the idea of angels is in Abrahamic religions came from this, but I'm not sure. Spenta, called Spent the Manu, but maybe he's also the Holy Spirit of Ahura Mazda? Ha! Ah, look at that! Very similar. Hold on. Seven Spenta, called Spent the Manu, but... Maybe he's also the Holy Spirit of Ahura Mazda. Hmm. Sometimes Ahura Mazda also has a parent called Zervan, who is time itself, but that's considered... Yeah, I heard that. I heard, like, Ahriman and Ahura Mazda have a mom. And I was like, I, wait a minute. I thought Ahura Mazda was the creator of everything. There's something above Ahura Mazda. And they're like, yeah, the mom is time. And I was like, do the Zoroastrians actually believe in this? But and some Zoroastrians said yes, and some of them said no. Um, so this is like, you know, ambiguous. Some people believe this, some, some Zoroastrians, some schools of thought in Zoroastrianism believe this, some of them don't. But yeah. Sometimes Ahura Mazda also has a parent called Zervan, who is time itself, but mm. that's considered heresy at this point. Look oh, now. that's heresy at this point. Okay, so officially not part of the religion. I don't have a lot of time to get into it. Honestly, it's a very old religion. There have been many different interpretations mm. over the last 3,000 years. I'm really just simplifying and providing the most commonly accepted current beliefs. Thank so you. Keep that in mind. Guys, look, I'm going to like this video just to show you guys how easy it is to appreciate a video. So you see, I liked it and I'm telling you to go subscribe to this channel. So please, please, please also like this video. Okay, so you saw how easy it was, right? Okay, let's continue. And, and as always, there's more information in the description. Opposed to Ahura Mazda is Angra Manu. This is Ahri Man. What the hell is Ahru Angru Mangru? Angra Manu is Ahri Man. Oh, we got a $5 super chat from Marco. And all religious people are... Oh my God. Nope, no, that's not right. Nope, the religious, not all religious people are morons. Nope, there are, very, some, there are some very smart religious people in the world. Don't even pretend you are so naive not to notice. Nope. Uh, I know enough that there are some people are dumb about some things, but just because they're about dumb about something, that doesn't mean they're 100% moron about everything. There are some very, very smart religious people in the world. But let's continue. The destructive spirit and his evil minions known as Davis. Angry Man you is... Oh, okay. So that guy had some holy beings and Ahri Man has some... Um, Dave, so Ahri Man or Angry Man you, had the destructive spirits and their evil minions. Okay, what are these evil minions called? Spirit and his evil minions known as Davis. Davis. Manu is Davis! Davis? That's where demons come from. Come on. This is probably this is probably where demons come from. Is it not that? Oh, here. Somebody is somebody saying Angry Minu at Arvista. Oh, yeah. So this guy is telling me in Persian that Angry Minu 
is in Avesta, which is basically Zoroastrian's um, book, holy book. That's the same as Ahriman. Okay, I'm just gonna say Ahriman because I didn't. I've never heard this angry minyo thing, and it's weird sounding. So I'm just gonna say Ahriman. Uh, Arjun saying, I mean, why, guys? Make sure you tag Atheist Republic if if you want me to see something. Why are you assuming your Persian is the same as old Iranian on this point? I have no idea either way on this. What? Why are you assuming your per your Persian is this? I have no idea what you're asking me. Is the complete polar opposite of Ahura Mazda. He is darkness, deceit. Right. So Ahriman is the opposite of Ahura Mazda. Okay. So complete polar opposite of Ahura Mazda. He's, he's the evil. Dark. He's the evil god. So ah Ahura Mazda is responsible for creating everything that is good, everything that is beautiful. Oh, that's Dev. Okay, thank you so much. Wow, I have some Persians in the live chat, like giving me the Persian version of things that. Uh, makes me more that I'm more familiar with. Thank you so much. That that's very helpful. Um, so yeah, but Ahriman the, or Angram Minu is the guy that creates everything that is evil, everything that is bad. If you if you get up in the morning and you um, you feel like you don't you know you're sad or you, you don't want to wake up, that feeling is created by Ahriman. If you hit your leg. In the side of the table and it's painful that pain is created by every man if you see, see a cute puppy and then you want to pet it that cute puppy comes from ahura mazda right if yeah basically if your favorite tv series all of a sudden goes bad and it goes in a direction that you didn't like or if you don't like the last season of your favorite tv series it was every man's doing that you know the, the writers were the agents of Ahriman that made sure that the TV series went in the in that direction. So basically, everything works like that. Darkness, deceit, death, and decay. He is a corrupting parasite seeking to destroy Ahura Mazda's creation and is responsible for all negative things in the world. Yeah, guys, this dualism, this dualistic look, way of looking at the world is, is very similar in many other religions, right? So animal, animal is saying all the same BS, yin, yang, etc. Yes, like, it's not just religious BS. Our mind is, the human brain, for some reason, is hardwired to see everything for, uh, from a dualistic perspective. And that's why we keep seeing that theme of good and bad um, and absolutist way of, like, black and white thinking um is ingrained within a lot of religions and that's why it, that's a theme that we keep saying it's a it's a function of our the fact that the human mind is uh, wired that way even though most things in nature are not binary um our brain sees it as well oh yeah so paradise yes the word paradise comes from the persian word pardis pardis all right well i probably we probably will get to that this guy will probably refer to that Ahura Mazda is light, and Gramanyu is darkness. Ahura Mazda is the creator, and Gramanyu the destroyer. Ahura Mazda created light, fire, compact Japanese vehicles, joy, <laughs> humanity, puppies probably. And Gramanyu gave the world disease, rust, mold, darkness, and that little piece of skin that pops up around your fingernail that hurts so much. Why, and Gramanyu? Why? <laughs> Zoroastrians think everything is a battle between these two opposites. Uhura Mazda represents the truth, and Gramanyu, the lie. For humans, life is a constant choice between the truth and the lie, which may be difficult because Angramanyu can be very deceiving. <gasps> Angramanyu can be very deceiving. Where you guys have heard that before? Where do you guys have heard that before? That is in the Bible, like right? the greatest. No, wait. That's also in the Quran. No, no, no. No, it's both. Yes, the devil is the greatest of all deceivers. It's very deceiving, right? Um, so Ahriman apparently is very deceiving as well. Oh, so divas, basically the divs, divs, which is the demons in Zoroastrianism, in Sanskrit and other Indian language means gods. Yeah, this is why it's weird because the demons in Zoroastrianism, what, again, I know they're not demons, that's more a Christian thing, but what is close to demons or divs in Zoroastrianism, apparently holy things in in uh, Hinduism, and the holy things in Zoroastrianism apparently are the demons in Hinduism. 
which is real. Is that like that's what I've heard? Is that is that accurate? Somebody will correct me if that's accurate. Hmm. Yeah, Ariman <laughs> is middle as F. Yes. <laughs> oh, here, Katie is Katie saying thieves, uh, demons. Okay, so wow, demons in in Zor in Zoroastrianism, divas is God in Ahuram, God in. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what this is. Like you're confusing me. Don't send me code messages like that. I need to decipher like that. But guys, does this mean like thieves all this time? The word like in, I grew up with the stories about thieves, which is kind of like demons in Persian. But I didn't know, I didn't know thieves is like divas, and divas seems to be the origin of demons. Everything is connected. All the things that I knew separately all seem connected somehow. It's so bizarre. Before time began, Ahura Mazda and Angra Manyu were separated by an infinite void. They respectively lived in infinite light and infinite darkness. Then Ahura Mazda created the physical or Gitig world. Angra Manyu crawled into this new world and polluted it. They made the ocean salty. They turned the good earth. Ah, into it was Ahriman that made all the ocean salty. That's why we don't have access to fresh water. That was the most evil thing. Wow. The ocean salty. They turned the good earth into desert, killed the first human, made plants wither, and polluted fire with smoke. We now live in a time Zoroastrians refer to as the Gumezishin or the mixture. Good Gumezishin or the mixture. And evil truth and the lie both exist together in our world so before they were separate but now we live at a time where they're all mixed but angra manu's presence is temporary they are a stain on the world rather than a permanent fixture zoroastrians see the physical world as a trap that ahura mazda lured angra manu into now trapped in the physical world angra manu can be defeated slowly by the good thoughts good words and good deeds of humans working with ahura mazda oh, okay so good and evil were separate but ahura mazda tricked ahriman or the evil god or angry Mengu, and basically brought the evil and this world that we're in it was a trap it was a trap for ahriman so he's now lured into this world and we are the agents of ahura mazda and with our good deeds we could destroy evil once and for all. Two, heaven and hell. Zoroastrians believe that when a person dies, their soul leaves their body. Their soul. I think they were the ones that who popularized this idea before, before the Abrahamic religions. It was the Zoroastrians. Zoroastrians. It was the Zoroastrians who popularized this idea of like you die and your soul goes somewhere else. I think it was our, guys. I apologize. This was all our fault and dies their soul leaves their body their soul is then led <gasps> to the bridge of judgment yeah Above this bridge lies heaven below hell Here heaven and hell okay see this is not hindus don't have heaven and hell right and this is way before abrahamic religions and we're talking about heaven and hell i knew it it was the zoroastrians that this is a very by the way this is one of the most sadistic inventions the idea of hell is one of the most sadistic inventions of human of the human race okay so I think before Christianity popularized it, there was the Russians who popularized it. ...of judgment. Above this bridge lies heaven, below hell. Here the soul's good and bad deeds are weighed on a scale. Depending on the balance of good to evil deeds, the soul ah! ascends to heaven, a paradise of infinite bliss called the abode of song, or falls down to hell to suffer, quote, long age of misery, darkness, bad food, and the crying of woe. This is called... England. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's guys go get go find this channel. Okay, the link to it is in, at the bottom of the description. This guy's this guy's sense of humor. I love it. Look at this. <laughs> Age of misery, darkness, bad food, and the crying of woe. This is called England. I mean, <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, sorry. This is called Duzak. There is also a Duzakh. Oh, Duzakh. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought the Duzakh was just a Persian name for hell, but no, it's the Russian for hell. There is also a medium place for people who are neither good nor evil, where they kind of bad, just bad float stuff. and experience nothing. Servants as well as masters can reach paradise. Paradise. Paradise or paradise.
people will be judged according to how they chose to live their lives lives rather than wealth or prestige. For Zoroastrians, death represents the highest form of pollution. Death only exists because of Angramanyu. Upon the death of a- Oh, see, very much like Christianity, that death only exists because of the corruption and sin. Before sinning, there was no such- Before the eating of the apple, there was no such thing as death. Upon the death of a Zoroastrian, a priest will be called to perform. They had everything dead in Zoroastrian is considered like, ugh, like najis or like very, you know, unclean. Like, that's why they when they clip their nails, like the nail clipping shouldn't touch. I, oh, an earth is, okay, wait, I think I got this right. Let me, I, if I remember correctly, everything that is dead is unholy and earth is holy. Like the planet is holy, right? Well, not the planet. They didn't know it was a planet. Or the earth is holy. So that's why dead things shouldn't, unholy things shouldn't touch holy things. So dead things shouldn't touch the ground. That's why when you clip your nails, you don't throw it on the ground. And your hair, that's why, guys, I don't know if this is true, but that's where hijab came from. Because the Russians, when they were covering their hair, it wasn't because of, like, to suppress sexuality. It was because the hair, the dead hair is dead, right? When it gets off of your, you know, so dead hair shouldn't, which is unholy, shouldn't touch the ground, which is holy. So they were covering their hair. So that's where the the origins of her are of hijab is from. That's what I've been told. I don't know if this is true. Can somebody tell me if this is true? Because I've been told that hijab came from Zoroastrians because they wanted to make sure that the hair doesn't touch the ground. Okay. And this is why Zoroastrians don't bury the dead, because you don't put dead things on the ground. You shouldn't go on the ground. The ground is holy, and dead bodies are dead and unholy, or something like that. So instead of putting it on the ground, but instead of burying their dead, they let you know birds come and eat the body, right? And goes into the sky. But somebody tells them that the birds poop. And the birds poop, and the poop will touch the ground. So I don't know how that works. Oh, Katie is saying Hinduism does have heaven and hell. Hinduism has heaven and hell. Hell is uh, described as a dark pit in the Vedas, while the later Purans have a very vivid description of different hells. Hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, I heard them referring to hell and heaven, but I thought that they were just, they learned that from Abrahamic, the connections with Abrahamic people. Yeah. Form a ceremony, after which the soul of the person will no longer be considered connected to the body. The family then says their goodbyes without touching the body, and the body will be placed on a stone slab and carried away by special corpse bearer. They're going to put it on a stone, they're not going to touch the body, they're going to put it on a stone slab so that it doesn't touch the ground. Dead things shouldn't start, touch the ground. Bearers. Since dead bodies are so polluting, Zoroastrians would never think to pollute any of the sacred elements with them, those being fire, water, earth, etc. So the traditional method to dispose of bodies, used for thousands of years, has been the Tower of Silence. Within these open-roofed stone towers, located on the top of barren hills, bodies will be laid to rest on stone slabs, as to not pollute the earth, and then eaten by vultures. Vultures, Only yes. And apparently the stone stabs con disconnects the bodies from earth. So the vultures, they feed them to, they feed their deads to the vultures. Within a few hours. The okay, but here's the thing though. The vultures, these vultures are going to poop. They're going to poop the bodies and the bodies are going to touch the ground. So how does that work? Isn't, yeah, so I don't understand. This is not, guys, your plan backfired. Your plan is not going to work. All that effort goes to, for nothing by vultures normally within a few hours the bones are bleached in the sun and quickly disintegrate into dust by feeding the birds the deceased offers up one final good deed of charity before crossing over the bridge however in the 1930s the iranian government banned the use of the towers and currently towers in india are suffering from a shortage of birds due to increased urbanization and pollution today oh my god so there's no bird there's no birds coming Many Zoroastrian communities use special burial grounds or have turned to electrical cremation or even using solar reflectors to harness the power of the sun to break down the bodies rather than polluting fire. 